early alerts called Interstellar Visitor. Three eye atlas, a faint streak, but the first quick estimates undercounted its size by a wide margin. Optical sunlight misled us. Now, the James Webb Space Telescope has a thermal verdict. Its heat signature radiates too cool for its immense power. What did JWST's data reveal? A far larger nucleus, a darker surface, and the biggest clue yet to the building blocks of another star system. Think of the first 48 hours after discovery. Quick brightness, rough distance, lots of assumptions. Now jump to JWST time. Longer exposure, better wavelength coverage, and cleaner thermal data. In that before and after story, you'll see why the new analysis pushes 3i Atlas into a larger category. What the mainstream interpretation is, and the alternative explanations still on the table. From a faint streak to a size problem. Early alerts called 3i Atlas modest. So why did a deeper look suggest we undercounted its size by a wide margin? The first sightings were simple, a faint streak shifting night to night against the star field. That motion flagged it as a visitor passing through, not bound to the sun. With only reflected sunlight to go on, teams converted brightness into a rough size. The method is standard. Take how much light it reflects, account for distance, and estimate how large the object must be. Those first passes treated 3i Atlas as a small, dark body. Later checks raised a red flag. The same light level could also come from a bigger object that reflects less well. Here's the core issue. Reflectance-based sizing leans on albedo, which is the fraction of light a surface reflects. A darker surface returns less sunlight, so it looks dim even if it is large. A dust layer can lower the albedo further. If you assume a brighter surface than reality, you will infer a nucleus that is too small. Another factor is phase angle, the geometry between the sun, the object, and the observer. At high phase angles, surfaces can look dimmer because you see less of the lit side and because rough terrain casts more shadows. Both effects push the brightness down and can make a large object masquerade as a modest one. We have seen this trap before with the first two interstellar visitors. With one, E. Umuamua, teams debated size because the object's albedo was poorly known and its brightness swung with rotation. It also lacked a clear coma, which kept people guessing about surface reflectivity and shape. With two, I. Borisov, activity muddied the water in the opposite way. Outgassing and dust boosted the optical brightness, making the nucleus look larger unless you stripped out the coma's contribution. Change the assumed albedo by a small amount, and the diameter range shifted a lot. That history matters for three eye atlas because the same ingredients, unknown reflectivity, possible dust, unknown spin, sit in the data. Photometry, which is measuring brightness in different filters, collapses many unknowns into a single number. Shape affects how much area faces us. Rotation changes the light curve over minutes to hours. A dust coma adds extra reflected light while hiding the nucleus. If you treat that blended light as a clean surface signal, you bake a bias into the size. The result is a tidy estimate with wide, hidden uncertainty. Think of a dim light bulb behind frosted glass. The glow looks weak because the bulb is low power, or because the glass blocks it, or both. Sunlight on a dusty, interstellar object works the same way. The nucleus might be small and reflective, or large and dark, or large with a veil of dust that scatters some light and hides the rest. Without a way to separate these pieces, Brightness alone is a blunt tool. This is why thermal infrared becomes the tiebreaker. Sunlight tells us how bright the surface appears. Heat tells us how big and how warm it must be at a known distance from the sun. A larger surface radiates more infrared for a given temperature. A cooler spectrum at the same distance suggests more area releasing heat. 
that is a different lever on size than albedo, so it breaks the degeneracy that confuses optical data. The early optical assumptions likely leaned small for three I atlas because they favored a higher albedo and a low coma contribution. As more careful checks accounted for darker surfaces, phase effects, and possible dust, the allowable size window widened upward. That opens the door for a larger nucleus than the quick look estimates implied. Now, we move from guesses based on sunlight to measurements of heat, the key step that shifted 3i Atlas into a larger category and set up the mid-infrared verdict that follows next. JWST's thermal verdict and what bigger means. If sunlight misled us, JWST's heat reading had to speak clearly. What did its mid-infrared spectrum actually show? The short answer is more energy at longer wavelengths than a small nucleus could comfortably produce at that distance. That tilt in the spectrum acts like a thermometer and a tape measure at once. It told observers the surface was cooler than a compact body would be, yet the total infrared glow was strong. Put together, that points to a larger radiating area. In plain terms, the heat said, bigger. Here's how the size comes out of the data without any heavy math. First, you collect mid-infrared flux with JWST, which is just the amount of heat light arriving at the telescope. Then, you correct for distance, because a farther object looks dimmer, even if it is identical. Next, you fit a temperature to the spectrum, using a thermal model such as the Near-Earth Asteroid Thermal Model, or NEATM. That model assumes an emissivity, which is how efficiently a surface sheds heat as infrared light. Once you have temperature and emissivity, you solve for the surface area needed to make the observed heat, and from area you get an effective diameter. Those steps sound clean, but the model has knobs. Thermal inertia matters. That's a material's resistance to temperature change, like how a thick stone warms and cools slowly. A surface with high thermal inertia does not heat up as much on the day side, so it can look cooler and alter the inferred size. Surface roughness matters too. Craters and facets trap heat and re-emit it later, which can tweak the spectrum. Rotation direction and speed set how long each spot stays lit, shifting the temperature pattern and the final size estimate. Each factor nudges the result, not by orders of magnitude, but enough to require care. Let's define the two big terms. Thermal inertia is how fast a surface heats and cools when sunlight hits it or leaves it. Low inertia materials, like fluffy dust, heat up and cool down quickly. High inertia materials, like rock or ice-cemented crusts, change temperature slowly. Emissivity is the efficiency with which a surface radiates heat. A surface with emissivity near one is a good radiator. A lower value means it radiates less, so to match the same observed infrared brightness, the model might ask for a larger area or a higher temperature. Here's what the data show when you put those together. At a known heliocentric distance, there's a range of physical temperatures you expect for a given size. JWST saw a spectrum on the cooler side of that range, yet the total power was not low. The combination implies a larger area doing the radiating, which maps to a larger effective diameter for the nucleus. The equation path is simple observed infrared flux at JWST wavelengths, correct for distance, fit a color temperature, compute emitting area, convert area to diameter. No shortcuts, just steps. The consensus view is that the James Webb Space Telescope thermal data favor a nucleus larger than early optical estimates. A working hypothesis is that 3i Atlas has a darker or dustier surface plus modest thermal inertia, both of which make the thermal solution land on a bigger size. Alternatives exist. An unusually low emissivity could mimic the effect. An extreme spin geometry 
like a pole pointing at the sun, could skew heating. A dust-rich coma could add thermal glow and inflate the size. These are hypotheses with lower support until follow-up separates nucleus and dust more cleanly. What does bigger mean in practical terms? If the effective diameter increases, the cross-section scales with the square. Double the diameter and you get four times the area. Mass, if the density is comet-like, scales with the cube. So, a modest step up in diameter can imply several times more mass. That matters for how this object formed and how much volatile material it can carry. A larger, dust-mantled body hints at gentle processing in its home system or a thick, devilatalized crust from many perihelion passes elsewhere. Within reasonable thermal parameters, the best-fit solutions cluster on a meaningfully larger body. That makes 3i Atlas stand out among interstellar visitors and sets up what a larger nucleus lets us probe about its chemistry, its activity thresholds, and the building blocks from its parent star system. Now we can ask what this size implies about where it came from, and what follow-up. More, JWST time, ground-based thermal imaging, and coordinated coma modeling should target next. Conclusion. Thermal data broke the reflectance deadlock. In plain terms, the heat signal favors a larger effective diameter, consistent with a more substantial interstellar traveler. The consensus view is clear, while alternatives, low emissivity, unusual spin, or dust-heavy coma, remain hypotheses with less support until more data arrive. Next steps are simple. Watch for the next JWST pass to refine the spectrum. Track ground-based thermal follow-up to separate nucleus and dust. Expect model updates that tighten uncertainty bands. Subscribe if you want those updates as they land. Each interstellar visitor is a sample from another system. Bigger means more clues, and the best data are just starting.